What's going on everyone? My name's Obi and welcome back to another episode of Courtside Financial. Today we've got some things that have me super excited and I'll keep it real with you. I'm invested in NEO, but today we're not here to blow sunshine. We're here to offer real analysis. So here's what happened this weekend that has the entire EV market buzzing, the entire EV world, I should say. NEO just pulled off what might be their most impressive product launch in history. And I'm not talking about just another car reveal. I'm talking about Lee Bin potentially saving his company with one impressive move. Let me paint the picture for you. Neo Day 2025 Hangzhou, Lee Bin walks out, reveals the third generation ES8, and drops a price that literally made the crowd drown him with cheers. 298,000 ren with their battery as a service rental system. But here's the kicker and here's where it gets interesting from a business perspective. Within hours of their announcement, their ordering system literally crashed. Not because of technical issues, but because Demand was so overwhelming that they couldn't handle the traffic. Lee Bin prepared 40,000 units of production capacity for the next three months. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, according to business intelligence from late post or insider intelligence from late post, they've already exceeded that capacity in pre-orders within 48 hours. Now, some people are looking at this and thinking Neo is desperate. They're wrong. Here's why. Here's why this is strategic brilliance. First, let's talk about what William Lee accomplished with pricing. The vehicle's full price is 406,800 uh, 406, Ren. That's about 54,000 US dollars. That's still premium positioning. The 298,800 Ren price point, that's their battery as a service model working exactly as intended. You're not buying the battery. You're essentially leasing it. But here's what most analysts are missing. Lee Bin, Bin explicitly stated that despite the lower price point on the newer vehicle, the margins are still better. Now, how's that? We have to consider economies of scale with a self-developed chip that reduces costs by around 10,000 Ren instead of the company having to rely on Nvidia's chips and also just battery reduction costs. They're finally materializing across the lineup. Lee Bin said something interesting in a post-event communication session. Their internal sales forecast for the ES8 were quote unquote conservative. Think about that for a second. This is a company that's been fighting for survival and they underestimated their premium flagships um, demand. They're targeting 15,000 units monthly by December. That's 180,000 units annually if they maintain that pace. For context, that would present a massive jump from their current volume. But here's where it gets really interesting from an investor perspective. Lee Bin's already managing expectation. He's telling customers that they might not get their car by year's end, and he's offering to cover the difference um, from the tax incentive drop from 30,000 to 15,000 for uh, customers who purchase now. That's customer retention strategy 101 and it shows that the company's thinking long term. While everyone's talking about price, some are missing that Neo just demonstrated some of the most advanced autonomous drivers, driving capabilities that I've seen from any manufacturer. Their new Aquila Super Sensing system has 31 pieces of sensing hardware, but the real breakthrough is their multivariate auto regressive generative model. I know that sounds like tech jargon, but here's what it means in practice. You could tell your Neo car park next to the lady in white clothes or take me to that car that we just passed. The car understands context, processes natural language, and executes complex instructions. That's not just autonomous driving, that's AI integration that makes Tesla's current offerings look basic. Here's what this means for NIO in the greater Chinese EV market. I think that NIO just proved manufacturers can compete on luxury, technology, and price simultaneously. They're not choosing one or two, they're doing all three. The ES8 635 kilometer CLTC range, 3.97 seconds, zero to 60 sprint, and five meter turning radius in a massive SUV. These aren't just good numbers, they're segment leading numbers. Bigger story is what does this do to German automakers, BMW, Audi, Mercedes? They're all looking at a Chinese company delivering comparable luxury, superior technology, and better value proposition. 
That's not a trend, that's a paradigm shift. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Can Neo actually make money? Lee Bin is promising Q4 pop profitability and the ES8 is supposed to be the key. Here's why I think he might actually pull it off. The vehicle architecture allows them to serve multiple segments. The same platform supports the ET9 Horizon Special Edition starting at 818,000 Ren. That's over $110,000. So they're playing both ends of the luxury market with shared R&D costs. Their battery swap infrastructure, which has been a cash drain, suddenly becomes an asset when you have volume. Every ES8 customer potentially uses that network and improves the utilization rate. Look, I'm optimistic about NEO, but let's keep it real. Execution is everything. They need to actually deliver 40,000 units by year end while maintaining quality. They need to scale production to meet unexpected demand, and they need to prove that these margins can hold up at volume. Purchase tax reduction is real. Customers waiting until 2026 will face higher costs, which could impact demand curve. Lee Bin's promise to overcome these differences it's smart PR, but it's also a financial commitment that will impact margin. What NEO accomplished this weekend wasn't a product launch. It was a statement. They're not just surviving. They're positioning to dominate. A combination of pricing strategy, technology advancement, and market positioning suggests that NEO's learned from its near-death experience. So will it work? The market's about to tell us, but one thing's for certain. Neo just changed the entire conversation in the luxury EV space. Everyone else is going to have to respond because of this. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. I am super happy with Neo. In case you guys can't tell, some of you guys say I'm a short, that I'm shorting the stock. If I was shorting the stock, I'd probably never get on YouTube again after, you know, what's been happening as of recently. Anyways, I'm a Neo bull. I've been invested. Watch the channel. I've been talking about Neo for years. Um, it's great to reconnect with you guys. I had a super crazy week as far as business, but I am back producing content. Um, that's it for this episode. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Share the video and click the notification bell icon. We'll see you in the next episode. Uh, this is Obi with the Courtside Financial Podcast signing off. Happy, happy Monday. Hope you guys enjoy the evening. Goodbye.